translucent starlight. Magical letters are sent flowing through the night's gentle breeze. The recipients of these letters would be welcomed to a one-of-a-kind event. Invites were sent to individuals from all over the world, reaching even beyond our own feeble realm. Guests show up disguised with stylish masks, meeting others from faraway lands. Upon a call from the master of the house, an honorary guest is invited for a private chat within the palace's lounge. Welcome to the Starfall Masquerade. See you soon. Hello everyone and welcome to another masquerade. I was in fact muted. My apologies. <laughs> welcome to another masquerade and today's guest is Sens. Hello Sens, welcome. Hello. How are you doing Sens? Great, great. A little tired because it's later but you know, not the worst. Don't worry, we're in, the, we're in the same boat here. Um, For all the new viewers who might not know who you are or what you do, um, would you like to kind of explain? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a VTuber. <laughs> You're a VTuber? I, no way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. What, what do I do? I, I, I do VTubing. I don't mm. know. I try to be funny sometimes. It, you know, gamer. <laughs> gamer? What games? Mm -hmm. Oh, everything. Uh, variety. I, I don't really have, like, a singular game that I play. I just play whatever sounds good. Mm. Do you think that's like something to the detriment of new streamers today, perhaps? Because I was having a conversation with um, another like VTuber friend of mine, and they were like, sometimes finding a niche can be very good over like complete variety. But in um, your opinion, as someone who's established, I'd like to know what your thoughts. Huh. Um. I don't know. It's it's funny that you called me established because I don't really feel established. Really? Just, yeah, I feel like just because I'm known of doesn't necessarily mean I'm established. Mm. I feel like, I don't know, I, I guess it depends on what you define as established. Like for me, I define established as someone who can like, I don't even know what I define, but I, I guess that that just might be me being like degrading to myself i don't know Aww. um but i i guess as far as like niche and stuff goes having a niche definitely makes it easier to grow mm. I, I i think that i think that even if you do start out in variety if you just have a personality that stands out and people can see you have a real passion for it i feel like you can still grow in variety just fine I mean, a, a lot of VTubers have blown up just doing what other VTubers do, but with their personality. Mm. Uh, I don't think that every VTuber that has grown necessarily has had to have grew because of a niche. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, one thing that you mentioned there was the about the thing of being an established VTuber. I think in my eyes, it's like anyone who can, not that I would know that about you, just I, I assume is like um, basically doing content creation and VTubing was like a full-time thing where they can rely on it financially or as a job, I think is like when I would begin to call it like an established, uh, yeah. like a job almost, <laughs> maybe, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with you, but that's actually the thing. I, I don't make enough to rely on it. Like mm -hmm. if I didn't have the support of the people that I have in my life, like, um, I, if if I didn't have the support of like my friends and family, I probably would not be able to rely on this uh, for a job I like I am now. I, I think the only reason that I am doing it full time is because I have the support of my friends and family. Um, so I guess by that definition, I I still wouldn't call myself established. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I, I, I might be known of by some people, but I, I don't know. That's an interesting kind of view. I, I appreciate that. Um, mm. When you mentioned games, I got pretty curious because I'm a huge game junkie. And I love hearing people's like general like love for games and what games specifically they like playing. Um, mm. Do you have any favorite video games? Any any things that inspired um, you to continue making content, or any specific games you think is easy to make content within? Um, it's easy to make. Um, I guess like I guess it's kind of globally known that the easiest game content wise are like horror games yeah. but i feel like if you don't truly enjoy them it's not the same as watching someone who does mm. I, I feel like no matter who you are as a streamer even if you take even if you just play horror games for the content easy for them being easy content i feel like the people who watch content creators especially the ones who watch vtubers they're not like they're not stupid they 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 can tell when someone is completely immersed or someone is just farming content. Mm. You know what I mean? So like even something like reacting to videos, that's easy content, but not anyone, not anyone can react to videos and still grow because you have to have a real passion for what you're watching. Like, like for example, um, I, I'm not going to mention any names, but, some of the people when I when I see them watch a video and they react and they're like successful streamers, they'll like really get into it. Like they'll talk about the semantics of the video. Mm. They will they will laugh at it. They'll be surprised when something happens. Like they'll give a genuine reaction to something that they're interested in, versus like someone who who is just reacting to videos because they don't they think it's easy content and mm. they just be like wow or ah oh, that's funny or just like you know what I mean like. Mm -hmm. the people watching streamers are not dumb they they will know if the streamer is truly there or and and they will know like it's it's really easy to tell like not just that but just any any even though we are using models you still will notice things like if your mm -hmm. streamer is feeling upset if they're angry if they're sad if they're happy if they're tired people yeah. people notice things um so I think that even even the content that is classified as quote unquote easy content, if you aren't someone who is passionate about your content as a whole or passionate about what you are doing with the easy content, I don't think you can grow. Mm, that's a really, really interesting take. I've never, I mean, it's one of those things that's like, yeah, I kind of had a feeling it existed, but coming now from your mouth that I'm hearing, I'm like, yeah, no, this makes total sense. There is a big difference between you, people who focus or put their focus within, okay, I'm going to make something that is easy so I can get something out there, to somebody that uses, um, for example, reaction videos or something in that kind of realm, which is easy, easy to make, but they kind of enhance that experience with their own personality and basically their mm -hmm. own kind of flavor, I guess you could call it. Yeah. But yeah, it makes total sense. Um, going back to the full-time streamer thing i'd like to know how you kind of got into vtubing because obviously i do some digging and, and i'd like to hear from you for our lovely audience when it all began the beginning story of, of sins um i used to be a primarily an fps content creator mm -hmm. horrible experience overall um i think <laughs> okay. that, um well first of all the the game i was playing was just very toxic environment in the content world mm. and um and, you know that aside i think that growing in any one game is a really really bad idea because when you get bored of the game and want to do variety you lose a lot of your fans right and that can be that can be very hurt hurtful to you both like m numbers wise and even emotionally you'll be like wow so they didn't watch me for me I mean, I will say there's there is there's still many pro players on games that their personalities stand out enough to where even if they switch to other stuff, people will still watch them. Mm -hmm. But but I I think that um yeah, I I think that just growing on a specific game is just a bad idea. But then um yeah, after after I quit the uh FPS scene, 
I got pretty big when Phasmophobia came out. Mm. Uh, I I was a VR streamer for the longest time. I would just play Phasmo in VR every day. And I was actually growing pretty well with that. Um, however, unfortunately, like all good things, Phasmo kind of started dying down. The hype died down. And I got pretty bored of it. Like, I wasn't getting scared anymore. There was no new content coming out. There were no other VR horror games for me to really switch to either. So I was kind of, like, stuck. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I, uh, I, I basically was just like, well, you know what? This is it. Like, I, I can't do anything else with content creation. I tried my best. So I actually was going to quit. Wow, really? Yeah. Um, it, I was pretty sad about it because I, I don't want to quit. It's it's not that I wanted to quit because content creation is my passion. I I'm a pretty introverted person, and for me, streaming is my main source of socializing, mm -hmm. which honestly might be a bit unhealthy, <laughs> to be honest, because I feel like humans are social creatures, and as much as online social interaction does help, I feel like we're supposed to be like real social more often but obviously i don't i don't do that um <laughs> but yeah uh, for me streaming is like my main form of social interaction and i feel like that's really the only thing i will ever be passionate about um so one day i one of the last days that i streamed on phasmo vr i collabed with a vtuber um her name is momo you might know her momo mischief e the green haired cat girl i believe so yes yeah, she's she's pretty established in the community. She's been around forever. But um but yeah, I, I collabed with her and I saw that she was using like a 3D model and that like blew my mind. I was like, wait, what? Cause cause the even before I became a VTuber, I had an anime mascot as my uh as my icon. Like mm -hmm. I had an anime character. And um that's that's honestly how my first model came about, which is why it's kind of a basic design. Mm. It's because I didn't really put much thought into it. I, I just, I just was like, "Hey, here's, you know, I, I saw her and I was like, dude, like, what the heck? Do you want to be friends?" And like, you know, I, I started figuring out what VTubing is, and and I was like, "Holy crap! Like, I can be this. I can be who I want to be here, and people will only watch me for my personality or my voice or whatever." And that, that to me was like. It was it was kind of like a ray of hope for me. Mm. I was I was like, wow, maybe I maybe I can still do this. And um, so yeah, I had the first model made, and I just debuted. I, I'd say it was a pretty rocky start for me. Um, coming from the FPS world, socially, at least in the VTuber sphere, I was not like ready, because in the FPS community, it was very like everyone was very blunt and forward, and honestly, kind of mean. And, yeah um, yeah and 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 the vtubing community is more welcoming and nice and comfy and just just happier overall and um so i didn't like fit in at first like at all i think that i think that honestly like i i, I was not a say i was a bad person but i just definitely wasn't the person that would fit in well here mm. but i actually am kind of happy that that happened because i met a lot of good friends um and they helped me change i've i've never before becoming a vtuber i've never been vulnerable on a stream i've never cried on stream oh. um i i've never i've never allowed myself to be someone who can be seen as having weaknesses you know what i mean yeah. because a lot a lot of shit like in the fps community it's like constant toxic masculinity just yeah. all the time um so that's just what i grew up on you know mm. and um so you know through vtubing i was able to meet some amazing friends who helped me like um who helped me honestly become a better person that's lovely. <laughs> like they, they all, they helped me be more vulnerable. They helped me be more sensitive, more empathetic. It's, it's been very crazy. I can um, imagine. I, I, I feel like 
I feel like a whole new person, honestly, and I'm happy with where I've gotten. I'm still not, I will never be to a point where I think I'm, I'm perfect. Nobody can be perfect, and I constantly will still be trying to better myself every day, but I am 100% confident that I am a million times better than I was before. That was lovely. I don't know, that made me very happy to hear, Sans. <laughs> mm. I'm very happy for you. I'd like to make some notes on what you said. I always obviously wanted to let you narrate your story, but um, mm -hmm. when you were talking about Phasmo, as some people pointed in chat, um, it does remind a lot of people of Among Us and how mm. like differently it impacted people during that kind of era, where like any other breakout genre, not necessarily game, but obviously Among Us being a game, it obviously gave people a platform and it grew people very quickly when people played Among Us or when they, you know, really strived within that category. And then once Among Us kind of died down, we saw a lot of creators kind of just give up or not come back because people wouldn't come back to like watching them do anything else but play the game they were known for. Mm. And that is that is scary. That is like being yeah. completely boxed into a niche and you just I, physically cannot escape. It. <laughs> that's that's why that that is why i think that while growing on variety is the most difficult thing for a content creator i think that everyone should strive to just grow on variety if they can if they I want mean, anyway. it's the least restricting if you do manage to make it at the end of the day isn't it so. yeah well it's because like when you do variety streams it forces not only yourself but the people who watch you to make a decision right they they mm -hmm. can either watch you because they like what you're doing or they can watch you for you like for example if i am playing a game any game a horror game a, a shooter game a story game i i would 100 percent like if i had to choose between having like 1000 viewers who are watching me because they like the game versus fucking i don't know like 200 viewers who are watching me because they like me i would easily choose the 200 because those are people who truly enjoy my company, my personality, my voice, versus people who were just watching me for the game. And the second that I got off that game, they would just go watch someone else playing the game. Mm. Because, because, that, because the goal of really any content creators, but VTubers especially, is to grow a community. And you want to be close with that community. You want to feel like that community likes you, not what you're doing. Absolutely. But then it is it is kind of like that high, I wouldn't say risk, but just mm -hmm. there's a higher hurdle you'd have to technically go through, but then a higher reward yeah. in theory at the end. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a pretty difficult decision, honestly, that I've seen people try and make. Um, I, I've tried variety, but I think it's funny you mentioned all this stuff about variety because I'm slowly trying to move into a niche. <laughs> so I hope that yeah. doesn't, go too poorly for no, me there's no there's nothing wrong with going into a niche uh, that's actually how a lot of people blow up is they will um like i said or i, I might have not mentioned this earlier but growing on a niche is very good because the niche can give you the attention that you need for people to see your personality mm -hmm. so like let's 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 i'll give you an example let's um let's say uh Oh, I get compared to this guy a lot because we have similar names. But you know, Tens, who played a Valorant yeah. professional. I never yeah. thought about the connection between you two. I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah. Whenever I stream Valorant, everyone just calls me like Dollar Store Tens. But um, but uh, let's take Tens for example. Tens is one of the best Valorant players out there, and that's how he blew up. That's how he got like all the support that he's gotten. But people stayed because he also has a nice personality. He's a he's a you know, he's a pretty good looking guy. He has a nice personality. You know, he, he makes, because he makes a lot of other content and all that other content just does maybe not as good as his Valorant content because the, the thing is, is like when you grow on a niche, even if you stray off of the niche and keep a lot of your community, there will still be those people who only watch you for your niche. Some fall off. And that isn't bad. Us. Yeah, yeah. And, and that isn't bad. It just means that Maybe instead of doing your niche every day, you can do variety most of the time and then just have one day a week where you satisfy those people who watch you for the niche. Mm. It's just it's just about weaning them off of... It, it's just about like once you grow in the niche that you're trying to grow in, I feel like the smartest thing to do is slowly wean the people off of watching you for the niche and 
make them watch you for you. You want you want people. It's not like you have to quit your niche once you blow up. It's more just like convert the people who watch you for the niche into people who watch you. For you. <laughs> convert. You sound like you're making this sound like it's a cult. <laughs> Let's start well, a cult I mean, and then we convert them into our followers. You know, there's nothing suspicious <laughs> about this at all, guys. But you know, yeah. Just make a religion around yeah, yourself. I mean, <laughs> I mean in, in a way, in a way, all content creation is kind of like culty if you really think about it. Mm. There's all these people who like follow this content creator and like idolize them and and like pay attention to their every word. It's you know. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you're not wrong. I guess. Um, another lovely topic that I've you know, brought in before to the masquerade that is like, I feel like it's very taboo um, to ask within this. It, it's not like taboo to ask, but it is not something yeah. spoken of often. I guess you could put it that mm -hmm. way is the kind of divide or the categorization of VTubers into two distinct kind of sections or like, I guess you could call it like a gradient as well, because sometimes People might not fall on either end, maybe in the middle, maybe sometimes between the two, which is how sometimes VTubers will, you know, just be themselves with a model, which is the case for me personally. Oh, and oh, are you, you have, talking about like how some people play a character? And yes. And the other, themselves? yeah, the other edge of that scale would be basically I, playing a character. I think that there's no wrong answer to that, to be honest. I feel like, I mean, look at actors, dude. Like it's i think that if you have fun playing if you have fun playing a character with your model you know i i like to think that people who play characters they're not necessarily acting like someone they're not maybe mm -hmm. they're acting like someone they want to be like for example let's say someone is very shy and introverted in real life but their model looks very confident so they act confident i feel like maybe that's them like a yearning feeling that they're portraying in a character. Mm. I, I feel like that's just them immersing themselves in someone. Maybe they, it doesn't have to be someone they want to be. Maybe it's just someone they like. Maybe maybe they like confident people, so they want to mm. act confident. And, and you know what? Like even even the other way, like if it's nothing about acting because they want to, maybe maybe they're acting because they think it's more profitable. Even that, Even then, like it's oh, impressive yeah. to be able, even then it's impressive to be able to act at all. So... If you're playing a character and it's working and you're happy, then fuck it, you know? Yeah. Like that do do whatever do whatever works. I I don't think that I don't think that there is a well, I don't want to say that. Um I almost said there's I don't think there's a wrong way to be too, but there definitely is. Oh, oh well, in a, yeah. In a malicious way. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't think that there is a hmm, I don't think that there is a um Mm. I don't think that there's a rule set to being a VTuber. I, I don't I don't think that you have to um I don't think that you have to act a certain way because of like the VTuber social space. You know what I mm. mean? Like if all of the you know, if you see other VTubers play a character, that still doesn't mean you need to play a character. If you see other VTubers be themselves, that still doesn't mean you, you need to just completely be yourself. I, I feel like Everyone should do what they're comfortable with and what they like doing. And as long as you're, as long as you are gaining something from it in a positive manner, I, I feel like what, you know, who cares? <laughs> yeah, no, that's completely fair. Um, hi, Vivi. Welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, unless I really. Doing it in a, unless you're doing like sus, like bad stuff. You know? Yeah, I was going to okay. mention we. I don't usually report on that kind of stuff because I like to keep the masquerade very either guest heavy or, you know, just talk about positive things, um, mm. considering have already enough negative things flown around the community because <laughs> the VTubers are not, uh, you know, let's just say we're not very free from drama is, is the way to put it. Um, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. So... To see that kind of take is very sweet of you, sons. I feel like you have, okay, this is going to sound weird. I don't, I'm not trying to like <laughs> be weird, but you have very kind eyes. I've noticed. It's like you just. What? This is just a model, man. What is no, that? No. <laughs> I mean, like, by the way you're speaking and the way you kind of 
see other people and content, mm. you just seem to just see the best in people. And that's very sweet. I don't know. Just because I never like when we've had I bring this conversation about the whole acting and, you know, people just being themselves very frequently. And that's the first time I've heard people say such a, an interesting point about people who play characters, about how they basically try and perhaps some of them play something they look like play a character and and like basically represent something someone they want to be like i've never even mm. thought about that but that's a very good point and a very interesting outlook that i'm definitely curious to think about more 100 percent. yeah i mean honestly that's kind of what i plan to do after my uh re-debut that's coming up I, oh really i'm 100 percent. yeah Currently, I'm 100% myself, and the real me, unfortunately, is a very, I don't know, an introverted, shy, like, very passive person, mm. just because of how I was raised. Um, but in reality, I'd like to be, I'd like to be more confident, more outgoing, and more friendly. And so, I'm probably going to try and, I, I guess, hmm, it's sort of acting, but it's not necessarily acting like another person it's just acting it's just it's kind of like that phrase fake it till you make it kind of thing yes it's your I'm, personality I'm, but with spice you could call yeah. it yeah yeah i'm i'm gonna try <laughs> and be more confident and more friendly and more outgoing mm -hmm. until it becomes a reality kind of thing yeah that's it seems like a plan and i'm i'm very excited for your re-debut that i believe is december january 7th Oh, it's January. I see. I'm very stoked. Starting the year no, fresh. It's okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm completely starting fresh. I I I had a bad habit of and and honestly, this is really common in this community, but a lot of us have a bad habit of worrying too much about others and not about ourselves. I, I feel like I feel like a bad habit I have is worrying about other people, what they're doing, their morals, their problems you know their communities when in reality i think something that everyone should do is just focus on themselves try to better yourself every day you know focus on your community and the people who care about you and truly support you because then i i just can't see how y you would have a bad life if you focus because you know you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i'm just very very happy to hear this kind of outlook this is like i swear this is like the most i guess you could call it um emotion heavy masquerade we've had because I'm, I'm glad you're bringing these topics because i know a lot of people or a lot of vtubers and um creators are kind of so terrified to put those thoughts out there but this is very insightful and i and i appreciate it <laughs> mm. well that was a lovely little beginning even more lovely than i was ever expecting um but it is time for us to do our first little game that i've prepared for you sons and we'll see if you can yeah. stack up um for this masquerade, I did decide to make a new game. Um, obviously, I can't I can't keep rehashing the same old ga games for all the VTubers that I have on. So we've have we have a new one for you today. You're gonna be my little test subject to see how well this does. Um, <laughs> so don't worry if you don't do well. Um, you're just a test dummy for the moment. And we'll actually start with the new uh, game. Here we go. It is called U I Trove. Now, let me explain to you how this works. We basically asked a really, really, like, shitty, um, like, artificial intelligence, like, generator to generate some images of video games that you know, because I researched what you've played. Mm. But, of course, they're terrible, because it's an AI that I use that's, like, super outdated, that has, like, okay. nothing in it. <laughs> so, the images are pretty scrambled. And I'm going to show you the AI first, and you have to tell me which game is shown on the picture. All right, are you ready? Yeah, yeah sure. This is, oh, I almost, I think I put them in the wrong order. Okay, I got it. All right, here is your first little UI-generated picture. What? Okay. <laughs> Don't okay, ask, well, that, chat. That's, that's clearly just Snake from Metal Gear Solid. What gave it away? <laughs> it's pretty stylized. I mean, it's just I a mean, camo dude with an eye patch. Surely it can't be that. <laughs> can't be that obvious. 
<laughs> well, uh, well, I mean, it, it really looks like him. All right, you got to give me a game. Oh, like a specific game? Uh, I'll take like general general title. Um, hmm. Well, in Metal Gear Solid Four, he is he has white hair. He's older, so maybe Metal Gear Solid Three or Two. I'll accept it. <laughs> well, you are right. It is Metal Gear Solid. I'll just take the the entire answer yeah. because the UI doesn't the the AI doesn't really like differentiate. I just put Metal Gear Solid into oh, it. Oh, yeah. See, that's from three. <laughs> that's from three. That, that I picture, see. That screenshot is from three. Yeah. I've always wanted to try Metal Gear Solid, but I never get around to it. And, but you I said it was on three. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. Um, would you recommend it as a game? I remember asking you and oh, you 100%. said it's like one of your favorites. Yeah, no, it's it's it scratches a lot of itches. Um, I, I like games that scratch a lot of itches. And what I mean by like sc scratching a lot of itches is like what I enjoy out of games is I enjoy a story that immerses me like a story mm. that has me keeps me interested. But I also enjoy games that have very fun gameplay and and also like are not too difficult, but difficult enough to keep you challenged and keep you like on your toes. And I don't think this game is necessarily challenging, but it's just very fun. Like and there's a lot of little details like the way you can like you can grab enemies and like interrogate them. You can kick them and knock them out. You can kind of like play with them. Mm. And like it's 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 very it's it's a very fun experience. Like there's and eventually you like get bonuses where you can do funny stuff. Like you have a camouflage where you just completely blend in. There, there's even like uh so you, there's a signature like snake hiding in a box thing. Mm -hmm. And then there there is a box with a picture of like an attractive woman on it. And if you like hold it up, the guards will get like distracted and look at it <laughs> and they'll be stunned for a while. That's I, so I mean, funny. There's even like porn magazines in the game, but you you don't actually there's no like nudity you don't see it but like mm. the point of the porn magazine is you put it on the floor and the guard will go to it and like pick it up and look at it and be distracted for a while it's just funny it has <laughs> it has yeah it has a perfect blend of like super rich story very serious gameplay very serious story but also like little sprinkles of comedy in the game mm. that really just make it beautiful I mean, that's, the, the most that why, I've like, gotten from so Snake is Smash. Yeah, like Smash is the, the reason I know yeah. Snake. I, the first one I played was the one on Wii that introduced mm -hmm. him. And I always thought, like, he looked very serious, but he was always kind of, like, goofy. Like, he always, yeah. he, he, like, pulled out a box and I was like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing is he's, he's a serious character. He, he's supposed to look serious and he sounds serious, but sometimes he does very goofy like childish things <laughs> and that that makes you like i don't know it kind of makes me relate to him because it's like even though he's older and he's a soldier and he's serious and there's a lot of serious stuff going on he still has a sense of humor he still has it makes him more relatable and more human you know mm, yeah mm. oh yeah well that is your one for one that was the easy round i thought you'd get that it's not too bad but we'll see if the diff... I don't know how about the difficulty of the rest of these, because it all depends on how quick your brain can, can pick up on the little details we have. Mm. All right, here we go for the second AI-generated game. Those look like kidneys, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I th they're shaped like kidneys um, for some reason. What the hell? This um, one's a bit harder. That I can... I can guarantee you, you've played all these games. So, is that like uh, Overwatch? Maybe is that your final guess? You got you got to input a guess because once that's gone through, you've only got one. So, I don't. Um. Okay. So, you guarantee I played this game. It looks. It kind of looks like a mix of like. I don't think it's Destiny because there's not enough edginess on it. I don't think it's Halo because I don't see any indications of like Spartan armor. Um, it makes it looks futuristic, so I would have to assume it's a futuristic game. If this is Call of Duty, I'll be very upset because there's nothing on that that would indicate Call of Duty. Mm. I don't know. Is it? It's a good question. It it definitely looks like some sort of soldier or like it. It looks like tactical futuristic armor. Mm -hmm. At least I think. I don't know. It. I'm just gonna say Overwatch. Yeah. 
I lock in an Overwatch. The correct answer was Overwatch. That was Tracer. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> With the whole like blue thing in the, in the center of her chest. Yeah. 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 That's what I. That's what I thought. Yeah. Let me put them back and forth so people can see. There you go. The the kind of the glasses rim like that. Their rims kind of showed through the AI as well, mm -hmm. and the position of the yeah. pistols also was there. So that. Yeah. See, yeah, I wasn't sure if those were pistols, but just her armor and stuff just really mm. reminded me of Overwatch. Yeah. Obviously, I don't have any one-to-one -one images because these were just—I mm -hmm. think they just like garbled up every single like tracer image they had into one there. Yeah. <laughs> but that works. How are you finding Overwatch too? Have you been playing? Uh oh yeah yeah I've been playing Overwatch. It's it's been fun. Yeah. Uh, I I'd say Overwatch is my least favorite FPS game. That doesn't mean I hate it. It just means I like it the least. Um only because Overwatch is one of those games where you your team every single member of your team has to be operating at like full capacity and with great other like if you have one teammate who's not doing their job, the whole team loses. Like you you can't you can carry to an extent if you're good enough, but I'd say in Overwatch, I see the least carrying out of most FPS games. Because, like, for example, even, like, Valorant, which is very team-heavy, there are people who get aces very regularly. People can yeah. just roll enemy I teams. I mean, yeah, it, with Va Valor is very different than Overwatch. I yeah. play, I've, I've played Overwatch since its launch, so I think I have some bearing to speak about how unfortunate yeah. it is how true the statement you said was. It like. I, I share with my friends very frequently, like, because, um, you know, there's only one tank now, so a tank has more mm -hmm. carry potential. Doesn't mean yeah. you can carry if your whole team is not, you know, helping you. Yeah. But you, like, I'll give you an example. I was playing, um, I believe it was Winston, and I got, like, mm -hmm. a really good damage mitigated, like, a lot of eliminations. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in there, but just, it's, just, it, one of the supports just wasn't doing it, or, like, one of the DPS just wasn't doing it, and the whole team yeah. falls apart, and it feels frustrating why do i yeah. continue to play that game no fucking clue but hey <laughs> it's there yeah, no so that that's exactly why I, i'd say it's my least favorite is because i don't know for some people they like games like that where teamwork is encouraged and sure i like i have fun on overwatch when the team is working well but that's like very rare unless you have like a full stack of friends that mm. you regularly play with and only play with them i think it's like impossible I feel like uh, Overwatch was is to like the the regular person is meant to only be consumed in a casual let's me let me have some fun with four other friends of mine for an afternoon yeah. because once you start getting into competitive it is it's, it's not nice <laughs> like if even if you like even if you are a good player and you just underperform you will get flamed to oblivion and yeah. unfortunately, that sometimes just is your fault and you just can't do anything about it. The Overwatch community is known for being, I mean, like any other FPS, not the most welcoming to new players. So I kept having to, to tell my, because I have a lot of friends that tried Overwatch 2 for the first time because it became free. I, I had to keep telling them, even if somebody, you know, tells you you're bad, you just have to, I guess, grow thick skin there because there's not much you can do other than report. And you're learning, but you know, people are learning. Of course, they're not going to be great once they first log into the game. I wasn't great when I started either. Um, but it is just the, the unfortunate side effects of kind of like the, the FPS community. It's just how it is. Mm -hmm. All righty. Here we go into the third AI generated image. You're two for two right now. Absolutely rocking it. This, I think this one's still pretty easy, but we'll see. Maybe it jumbles you up a little bit. Here we go. I think I think you have plenty plenty of uh, hints here to kind of give you give you some bearing. Uh, yeah, that definitely looks like Link from The Legend of Zelda. All right, but I'm not, I'm not taking I'm not taking this series. I need you to give me the actual game. Otherwise, it's gonna be oh, too the easy. The Legend of Zelda. It, it, a specific Legend of Zelda. Oh, Do you think you can a specific game? Um, hmm. Based on the graphics, it looks like it. Well, it's kind of hard because two of the games were made on the exact same engine. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say it would have to be either Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask. Ooh. I'll still give it to you because you still got Legend of Zelda, but that was actually fed through the Twilight Princess. 
Really? Words, yeah. Wow. Surprisingly enough, that was Twilight Princess. Well, that looks nothing like that. No, I'm, okay, this, dude. this is just a reference to the game. No, this is I, not meant to I, be the same. Uh, but but like the the <laughs> the way that they made the model looks exactly like the models were made in yeah. the Ocarina of Time and like the even Nintendo the floor game. doesn't it like the the yes, floor <laughs> the, the floor looks exactly like it did in Ocarina of Time Majora's Mask that's crazy well that's the part of the the the, the shitty part of the, <laughs> the AI that I said yeah yeah it probably like got the got Legend baited. of Zelda like Ocarina probably came up within its like search and it probably included Ocarina that is probably the most popular one so that's probably exactly where they got that from because that is uncanny like it literally mm. like if you look at twilight princess it looks nothing like it the texturing <laughs> the model if you if you look at ocarina of time right now though it it will literally look like it's just ripped straight from there yeah but i'll still give you the point because yeah, no, yeah you got the legend of zelda you did all right you did all right i'll give you some leo since this is the first uh the first yeah, time I just do give this. me half credit just give me half credit <laughs> All right, these next two, I'm fully expecting you to get these, sons. There's no reason for you to not get these, okay? All right? I'm, I'm, I don't I'm, feel I'm, like they're going to be hard. Because they are. Maybe. Actually. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't know. The thing is, it's so difficult to, like, gauge, like, difficulty within my games. Because I've had mass grade games where I was like, oh, this shit's easy. And they've gotten none right. And, I was, and, and then I make them harder. And then my next, next guest will have, like, an ace of answers correct. So it just depends on person to person, say so we'll see it's up to you here is the fourth fourth ai generated image now this is a bit eerie i guess you could call it this looks a bit fucked up um um <laughs> but i, okay. I thought it was a pretty cool ai generated okay, thing okay well i i don't think i could ever guess this it, it's a horror game mm -hmm. definitely um I mean, I hope you'd play this, considering you said you'd liked horror games. We'll see, though. We'll see. I... I think you can make some pretty good mm. assumptions here. I have faith in you. Well, the thing is, is, like, the body type doesn't look like anything in specific. Um, I mean, it is mangled, because anything that goes through the second yeah. thing is, just becomes mangled. Yeah. <laughs> I... It, it kind of reminds me of Amnesia. Mm. Um, the art style and just the way the dude looks kind of reminds me of Amnesia. I don't know if you've heard of that series, but of course, yeah. Um, I I honestly can't I can't think of any other games. So yeah, I'll just go with Amnesia. All right, Amnesia locked in. Are we gonna have an answer? Is it Amnesia? It is in fact amnesia. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, that it was, was the uh, the creepy crawly in amnesia. The dude yeah. with the the open mouth. <laughs> wow. I, okay, that was a pretty good guess. <laughs> yeah. I, gotta say. I I didn't expect to get that because I haven't played amnesia in years. Like mm -hmm. I, I, that's crazy. I was hoping you'd pick up on like the eye and the mm -hmm. kind of the shape of the skull. It's you can see yeah. some resemblance there. Obviously, not a lot. Yeah, <laughs> just like really vague. Yeah. Well, well done. All right. You're four for four, absolutely killing it. But are you gonna get an ace on the first time UI Trove is presented? Is my question. Probably I not. think so. I think so. This last one, you got this. <laughs> Actually, now that I'm looking at this, it kind of looks like. Do you do you remember that one game that popped off like ages ago? It was like one player plays as the dad and the other played as like a baby and the baby's yeah, goal yeah. was like to kill himself <laughs> for yeah, no, the time right I, I do know that day yeah or i knew that uh, <gasps> i do know that game that's called um what is it called D daddy something something like that yeah daddy. <laughs> yeah the hands reminded me of that game for Who's some your reason daddy? that's what it's called exactly yes thank you but of course it's not um if it wasn't obvious it's not that. all right let's see <laughs> this game looks like phasmophobia uh it's kind of hard to see anything because there's n there's not much coherent besides what looks like a dark room and like hands on your screen. Mm -hmm. Um, the only game that I can think of that kind of has this vibe is Phasmo. Mm, because it does look to be like a modernish house. Um, maybe. And, and Phasmo is the only ghost hunting game that is that popular that has a modernish house that is in first person like that.
but in Phasmo, you don't see your arms, but that just might be the AI putting that there. It can't be Five Nights at Freddy's, um, because there's no indication of that. Uh, what other... Actually, that would have been a good one. Thank you for that. I'm going to put that in the next you I threw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's would have been a good one for sure. Um, let's see. Hmm, it can't be a Resident Evil game because there's no zombie or gun or anything. Um, it can't be an SCP game because SCP games have much brighter lighting and like there would be some sort of hideous creature. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm just going to go with Phasmo. Phasmophobia is locked in. Is it Phasmo? It absolutely is. It is Phasmophobia. You're five <laughs> for five. I mean, I had to put it in there, you know. One yeah. thing I'd like to note, which is fucking hilarious. I fed the AI like 50 different like um versions of Among Us, but none of them, none of them made it like subtle. Like I couldn't <laughs> show it to you. Because it was the, the bean, the Among Us bean was in yeah. every single one of them. No matter how many like, fucking words I put in. I, I feel like with Among Us, it's kind of hard because the literally, so AI, AI usually does like basic shapes is mm -hmm. what they do is they copy basic shape and basic lighting. And Among Us is one of the only games that I can think of where the characters are already basic shapes. So that yeah. just makes it easy for the AI to copy it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, <laughs> even though you said the AI is shitty, um, it did an impressive job because obviously I was able to tell what the games mm -hmm. were. So that that in itself is pretty impressive. The fact that it was able to take like a prompt or a game and actually make something. I think the Twilight Princess one was bad on the AI's part, mm -hmm. but... But I think I don't I don't know if you actually fed it Twilight Princess or you just did like Zelda. I did, or yeah. Zelda. I did feed it Twilight Princess specifically. Yeah, so so that one was actually bad on the AI's part because it very clearly did not use Twilight Princess at all. It used it straight up just took models and textures from it just Ocarina yeah. of Time. I think it just yeah like merged together like a shit ton yeah. of uh, Zelda games into one. If I'm honest with you, I saw like I, s so many little references there. Yeah. Yeah, but like the main textures and like the the model and the ground and the sky, th those are directly from like the older games, like Ocarina of Time, Majora's mm -hmm. Mask, which was um that's kind of crazy. But yeah, that that one was kind of bad on the AI's part. But I still could tell it was Zelda, which is good enough. Very um, nice. Yeah, no, they were they were they were pretty impressive. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, that was a phenomenal UI trove and a and a. Like or it's AI. Why do I keep saying UI? Because I'm I study UI because <laughs> it's design shit. It was meant to be AI trove. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> well, I'll have Oops. to keep the name now. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but yeah, that was a phenomenal round. Just five for five, absolutely cleaning the floor. Maybe I'll have to make it harder for our next guest. That's the unfortunate truth of being a test dummy. Is that you basically, if you do well. You're setting up the next guest to do poorly because it's going to be harder. <laughs> but yeah, phenomenal job. We are going to go on a small five minute break, but don't go anywhere yet. After we are back, we're hopefully doing a uh, Q&A with Sens here. I'll be starting him off with a question. But if Chen has any questions for Sens, please feel free to write them in the chat. Obviously, keep in mind basic boundaries and um, obviously Sens if you there's anything that you wouldn't like to answer. You just skip over it. Yeah, I'll yeah. just say it, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I'll see you guys in just a second.
Hello everyone, we are back. Now here to start with the Q&A. If any one of you lovely viewers have any questions for Sens, please feel free to put them in the chat. However, uh, as we wait for Chan to catch up to me saying that, I will start you off um, with one of my own. Sens, how do you keep like ideas coming? Do you have like a specific creative process that you go through? Anything that you do to, you know, ideas for get content? the uh, ideas flowing, yeah. Or is it just random? Um, Whatever comes into mind. I'd say at the current moment, with the way I've been doing things for the past year, it's been very erratic. I, I never really have a plan. I don't even have a schedule yet for mm. streams. I just stream every day or whenever I feel like it. Um, that is probably not the best way to do things, and I wouldn't recommend it. I just have been doing it because it's what I'm used to, and I just have been not feeling like it. Mm -hmm. But... Um, but to, uh, after my debut, I plan on having a set schedule and always being on time and stuff. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. I just, it's one of the most interesting things to me is how people come up with ideas because humans are so different from one another that creative process is like the thing that really makes like people different in my brain. It's, I've seen the craziest things that people do to try and get ideas. Like, I know that people, some people just like, travel and they use that to get content ideas people who just think consuming media in general um mm -hmm. just like either may that be video games some people watch anime to just get content ideas. Yeah, it's crazy yeah, yeah. really interesting outlook kiyomi khan asks i was wondering about the inspiration for the sense design i'm actually that's a very good question i'm curious too um well my current my current um hmm my old design, which is my 3D model, which I've been using for most of the year, was really kind of me. Uh, the brown eyes are because I have brown eyes for real, and the white hair is because I had my hair dyed white for the longest time. Oh, wow, you did? Was just... mm -hmm. oh, that's cool. And, um, and the clothing was just stuff that I have that I would wear at home and, and with friends and stuff. And... Um, and... Um, that's really it. it I, I just incorporated some like demon stuff and like a demon eye just because I wanted to be a demon. And I, mm. I think, I think demons look cool. I, I think that, um, well also blue is my favorite color. So that's why I wanted to be like a blue demon. Mm. Um, and yeah, we are very, really very it. like yin and yang right now. Cause I yeah. like red is my whole like thing. And then you're yeah, like yeah. the chili blue in the corner over there. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, <laughs> I would say red is probably my third favorite color, purple being my second because it's mm. red and blue together. Maybe you got um, that ranking a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um but uh this design that I have right now, this was planned to be my second model, but I never got around to it because I wanted to be a little more whimsical and more creative. Mm. So I just posted this design and was like, I'm not gonna use it. I might as well just post it online, let everyone see. And um my chibi art mom rachan she actually made this model for me as a gift um i didn't That's so sweet yeah yeah it was very sweet um i was really surprised i was like wow thank you for like holy shit that's actually why i've been using it like pretty much nonstop, and i've stopped using my old model because i was so grateful for her making me this Mm. and putting all that time in and i was like the least i can do is you know use it and get great use out of it while i can mm -hmm. um but my new design which no one well besides the people who are doing stuff with it um my newest design is it's it the best way for me to explain it without telling details is it is still me so when when you see the model you will recognize that hey that's probably sense however it is extremely different thematically um so i am it's very similar. excited <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's very me as in like the color scheme is still similar it's a similar color scheme but thematically completely different very very oh, yeah here we go i'm, I'm stoked <laughs> to see has the uh, debut stuff been going well like the progress i know it's a very like uh, like hmm. it's pretty it's a task like to, to yeah. get everything set up so mm -hmm. I think the hardest part is the hardest part of the debut for me, at least so far, has been the preparation. Um, I don't have a manager to talk to artists for me or set stuff up for me. 
I have to personally go to each and every artist and commission them and um, and tell them to make the art for me. And I, I have to follow up and make sure that they're doing it and let them know that there's a set date and time. Because I, I also have, I talked to Twitch staff and I my debut is planned for January 7th. And they're giving me Twitch, Twitch front page, so I can't <gasps> change the date. Yippee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I can't change the page or anything. So it's it's locked in. I I um I so the hardest part has been finding every artist for every part of it and then making sure that they do it. And then and then the other hardest part is definitely like um the um the the, the cost. It costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um it, well, okay. It doesn't necessarily cost a lot of money. It costs a lot of money for me because I'm going all out, and that's my choice. Um, VTubing regardless, isn't necessarily. Ex I'll be yeah. honest. I, th I think regardless, even if you go small, like yeah, it is still an investment. Let's be honest here. For a model, no, yeah, any model shouldn't be cheap. Like I don't know because our no, I, I've so, seen the work that it mm -hmm. that goes into because I, I I'm in a circle surrounded by. A lot of people who know rigging and who know model making. And when I tell you it looks like an absolute nightmare, I mean it. That shit looks insane. Yeah. Like, I cannot believe half the shit I see on their programs. Yeah, well, like, like yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, I don't think that VTubing needs a price point. I don't think that there's a, you have to, everyone who VTubes has to go super expensive. No one does. Mm. Um, I'm only doing it because within the year that I've been VTubing, I decided the way to thank the community and my community and just everyone for being so supportive of me this year is to invest everything that I've made back into it and give them a good show and put more effort into it, you know? Yeah. Oh my God. Hi, Lulu. Oh my God. We're getting raided by <laughs> my lovely friends. Hello, people. Welcome to the masquerade. Now, yeah, what I meant by that is that Obviously, when people are starting out, the general recommended advice is that people use like mm -hmm. a pre-made model or a model that you can tweak because it tends to be a lot mm -hmm. cheaper. What I meant by that is like um, custom-made models, specific. Oh shit! Sorry, somebody um, farted I need in my to ear. Go check. Oh, jeez. I need <laughs> to go check on something real quick. Would I be able to like AFK for like thirty, like twenty? Seconds, yeah, of 30? course. I'm just gonna talk yeah. to all the raiders. So, yeah, Don't go worry. ahead. I will be right back. All right. I think I can, this is the first time this has happened. I think I can do a little, little bit of this action. Why am I so big over here? Hello, Lulu. Thank you for the raid. I really appreciate it. And Nin as well. Were you guys streaming together? Also, I'm really fucking big right now for no reason. Um, my bad. <laughs> yeah, the raid message was there. <laughs> Hello, people. Welcome, welcome. We are doing a masquerade today with the lovely Sens. Um, for some reason, I can't find my VTuber model in my layout to change it. Um, for some reason, why is it doing this to me? There we go. Finally. All right. But yeah, we're we're not at the end yet. We still have another fun game that I'm going to be doing with Sens. I'll just wait for him to get back. I hope you guys had a lovely stream. It's very rare that we get raided during a masquerade, considering how short of a, like, um, what do you call it? Like a time frame it tends to be. It's only like an hour and a half at most. So I appreciate it. I did have to wake up fairly fucking early for this. It's 8 a.m. I had to wake up. But the problem is um, I got Senza's times mixed up with what my next guest. So I had to speed run making his games last night. Um, which resulted in me sleeping late and then having to wake up early, which let me tell you, it, it's not, it's not, it's not a good idea, guys. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> it's very rare I get to talk to chat in my masquerade outfit. <laughs> it's usually just uh, reserved for my guests. Yeah, I'm sleep. I'm probably gonna nap ass straight after the stream if I'm being completely real with you guys. Mm -mm. I'm a sleepy star indeed. <laughs> Are you back, sir? Everything okay? Sorry, I'm back. Yeah. 
Let's see. Okay. Let's go back to over here. There we go. We are back. <clears throat> I forgot what we were talking about. I'll be completely honest with you because I got um, <laughs> sidetracked with chat. Oh, we were just talking about like how VTubing is. Oh, expensive. Not yes. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So people usually start with like 2D models or like pre built. Is it called Vroid? I've heard a lot about yeah, Vroid. It's, it's Vroid. Not everyone starts that way, but there, there's not really a wrong way to start. It's just that if you want to be super safe, because the unfortunate reality is I've seen a lot of people that will spend thousands on a high end model before they give VTubing a try. And then they realize they don't enjoy it. And then not mm. then then they just quit and it was a waste of their time and money or not their time but definitely their money um <laughs> but but which is why like usually i recommend when people ask me like how do you what do you think i should do coming into vtubing i i usually say like you don't have to go all in like i, I feel like people think that you have to go all in and get a crazy model but you definitely don't you can start out with a png you can make a vroid which is free it's just like a little website it's kind of like making a character on a social game mm -hmm. um make a vroid try it out a png whatever like even even a cheat model if you want to go that route um or like you know just um a budget model kind of thing mm -hmm. and um there's nothing wrong with that and until like you make the money or at least confirm that you hey this is something that i enjoy um hey. Oh, sorry. I thought you were. Um, gonna... <laughs> oh, sorry. No, yeah. I, I got really sidetracked for a second. Um, <laughs> so this is something that you enjoy. <laughs> this is something that you enjoy. Um, and you know what? Fucking <laughs> go for it once you go all out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's it like the I think the VTubing sphere would probably be considered like one of the fastest growing in the last couple of years. Like it, it like really grew not only in viewership but also in the amount of content creators trying to be VTubers because it's such a like an open um thing. It allows for privacy, which I know a lot of people, not all VTubers are like I'm gonna become a VTuber for privacy, but it is a very nice like um addition to the people who do kind of want that barrier. Um, it is funny also how. Some people will also design themselves to be as far removed from themselves as possible within that character playing aspect we talked about. Um, I could not be further from that. I literally designed my persona after myself. So I am very far from that kind of boat. <laughs> so. um, we have one more game for us to do before um, the masquerade closes. We still have some mm. time. So before we get too into this topic, I'd like to kind of shift us into that. Um, it is, in fact, a game that we've done before in the Masquerade, but one that is very fun nonetheless, and I think you are going to enjoy it. Um, let me quickly get the thing for it. There we go. It is the one and only Would You Rather. Now, let me explain oh, wow. to you how this works. It's not the way that it is casually played. Um, you are allowed to give me which option you would choose, but that's not your goal. Your goal here is to guess the majority vote within these would you okay. rathers. So these were done on yeah. think like on like millions of people. These are taken directly sure. from like an official would you rather website. And you're just going to have to guess which one you think people chose the most. And we have five questions here for you. Um, I'll obviously give you the percentages after, but these are pretty appalling. So we'll see if you can uh, pull through. This one, I can very clearly dictate the difficulty because as we go along, the, the percentage difference between them is going to be, it's going to get like smaller and smaller. It's like the first ones have like a big difference in percentage. And then the last ones are like 5% off each side. So we'll see how well you do. All right, you ready? Mm. Here we go. Would you rather number one? Would you rather never ever shave again? Or would you never ever cut your nails or your toenails ever again? Uh, it's a pretty 
pretty yucky mm. ewe question to start off, but I thought I thought never the never shave again or never cut your nails again. Mm. Does never cutting your nails include like biting or something, or does it just mean like? See, here's the thing: when my guests like ask for like specific details on these, unfortunately, mm. that is up to you to figure out what okay, you I'm, thought I'm... that the population mm. thought within that question. I would assume so. It just means never break them off. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna assume that yeah, it just means like the general where you can't. There's no like funky way to do it i'm just gonna assume like all forms mm -hmm. um hmm. i guess it would really depend on person to person because like if for me personally my facial hair doesn't grow super long so i'd probably just choose never shave mm. um but for some people shaving is everything i'll go with number one number one all right i will in no specific order i will give you the percentages they were 69% and 31%. And the option with 69% was never shave again. There you go. Ah. You're one for one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, also women that kind of take this. And as uh, Kia said, you could probably use wax. I don't know if wax would be considered as shaving. I guess shaving encapsulates like any action that would remove hair from your body, I would presume. Um, but yeah, still a pretty big landslide here. For shaving, surprisingly enough. But yeah, long nails are yucky. Not not a fan. Your second Woody Rather is pretty <laughs> It's pretty interesting to say the least. I, I just picked this one because it was very goofy, but I think you'll like it. <laughs> Would you rather have no thumbs or only have thumbs? Uh <laughs> No thumbs or only have fun thumbs. So all my other fingers would be thumbs? Yes. Oh, no, no, I see. No, I see. So you'd only have the two thumbs or, or no thumbs? No, 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 no. You would... No, 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 no. You would either have no thumbs or all your fingers on your hand. Wait. Oh, shit. No, I think it means only have thumbs, so no other fingers. Oh, my God. I would, I did, definitely, I, choose, I, <laughs> I would definitely choose one, then. I completely misread the question. I thought the second option was just like have all your fingers be replaced no, with I'm thumbs. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. I'm pretty sure that no, just means only have thumbs. Now that you've mentioned it, yeah, it's like super obvious that it meant it means only thumbs. I don't know why my brain <laughs> thought of that as like just that sounds yeah, no, grotesque. Yeah, no, I did too at first, but <laughs> once you read it again, it's like oh, it's obvious. So you picked which one? Uh, I chose one. Have no thumbs. All right, with. A 62% pick rate. I have no thumbs was the winner. Yeah, I mean, now that I, I know the actual would you rather, yeah, this is a bit more obvious. I did wonder why this was so, like, like um, tilted to having no thumbs, considering I thought that the second option involved having five fingers <laughs> that were all thumbs. But yeah, this makes a lot more sense. You are two for two. Congratulations. All right, three more. Are you going to mm. completely ace these games? Goddamn, sense. Holy shit. <laughs> Fuck it up. The game, the game one was easy because uh, those were just games that I know. So, mm. to be fair. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're just big brain. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I don't think so. Let's see <laughs> the next one. Would you rather be allergic to babies or be allergic to the elderly? <laughs> uh, definitely the elderly. <laughs> I don't yeah, know why this I, is so I, funny to me. I, I'll choose number two for this. Be allergic to the elderly? Yeah. All right. We're running through these quick with, an, again, this was not intentional, but with a 69, again, percent pick, right? Be allergic to the elderly one. <laughs> what made you pick the elderly specific? Um, I chose the elderly because babies will not like you don't have to deal with babies in the real world as often as the elderly. And if I had an excuse to stay away from them, then I would take it. It'd be most, very most peculiar to put babies in your allergy card, I, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, I don't know. The elderly are like, most of them are kind of weird. Uh, I, I know of a lot of nice elderly people too, but I, I don't know. I just... Fair enough. I would you... rather do elderly. Yeah. You gauge the, the general public opinion, so you're doing phenomenally. Yeah. 
Here is the fourth. Would you rather? Would you rather? This is a pretty deep one, and I feel like it's fitting based on the conversations that we've had so far in this masquerade. Um, be which a content is failure, be content, happy success. So, like, you're happy being a failure, or you're unhappy being successful. It's a pretty deep one, to be fair. And I can guarantee you that the um, percentage difference in these is very, very slim. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, be a content failure or be an unhappy success. Hmm. I will say number two only because in number one it says be an un a content failure, but it doesn't say it doesn't say you're happy being a content failure. It just says be a failure. At least number two, you have success, which in itself is something positive, even if you're unhappy. Well, content, I guess you could be replaced if you're happy, no? Oh, oh yeah, my it's, god. It's I just content, realized, no, that's not says, content. I thought, I thought it was con I thought it was content. Oh my god. <laughs> like like a content uh, okay. creator? Like you, yeah, yeah. you don't you either don't make it as a content creator or oh, yeah, you have yeah, success yeah. but you're unhappy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. See, that's what that's what I thought it was. Okay. Yeah. I would definitely choose number one then, only mm. because if you are happy and you failed, that means that you probably found something else that you can do well at. Not to be well, what's the word cheesy, but um, I guess you found success in another way. So technically, yeah. it, it's a victory. All right, you picked number one with a fifty-four percent pick rate. Number one was the chosen one. I was sweating there for a little bit. I thought you were going to get that wrong. Um, <laughs> you were so laser beamed onto number two that got, kind of, got me kind of worried there. But thankfully, I uh, made sure to make the, 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 content, the content part a bit clearer. Um, the wonders of English, having two words written the exact same yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, I I English. Really, I got confused for a second. But... <laughs> All right, here we go with your last one. Let's see if you can ace this would you rather. Uh, this one is a 55% to 45%. Again, in no specific oh, order. So we'll see if you can pull through. Would you rather go one year without your teeth or go one year without any internet access? Oh, teeth, 100%. Yeah. Okay. That was, well, how come? That was quick. Holy. Um, because without your, you can still eat without your teeth. Um, without the internet, I would be miserable. <laughs> mm, fair enough. So you're picking two? Yeah. Or one? Wait. Or no, one. Yeah. You're picking one. All right. With a 55% pick rate, number two was actually the victor. Oh, Now, you gotta really? think here. What the heck? These are all internet junkies that are taking this fucking thing. So, to them, they would rather... Actually, no, this... Actually, no. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm confusing myself. It's the other way around. Yeah, this is peculiar. Huh. I mean, I guess you could... Yeah, no, this doesn't make any sense now that I think about it, considering you could get, like, dentures. Well, that is up yeah. to the public to be stupid. Not, not, I will outsource the blame on that one. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not my fault, I swear. But yeah, still, you did pretty well. Four out of five, you did very, very fucking well. Thank so, you, thank you. Congratulations. No teeth means no good food. No good food means no happiness. Actually, that's a fair point. Not, not a bad point to bring up. Well, sons, as we reach the end here, I'd like to close us off with one final question. Uh, which mm. kind of has been touched on quite a lot here, but I feel like it's a it's a, always a nice wrap up kind of question um, for the masquerade, which is the future of Sens. What do you plan to do until your ever awaited debut? And uh, I'm guessing you're keeping all the secrets for everything that's happening after the debut. But I'm curious, mm -hmm. what is the future of uh, Sens? What does it entail? Um. Just a lot of structure. I want to focus on myself and my community and have a schedule and uh, just be happy, honestly. Because mm. I don't know, I don't want to be a downer, but right now I, I don't know, I'm just not very happy right now. Mm. And it's not anyone's fault. Um, it's more like my life is very erratic. There's no structure. I, I have, you know, I rely on other people for happiness and 
I don't think I should. Mm. I, I, I want to focus on myself and the people around me and find happiness in myself and find peace with myself. How deep. That's very, very, yeah. uh, very sweet. And I, and I wish you the best of luck with that. Because I, <laughs> I can definitely empathize with that kind of thing. Um, it is a everlasting struggle. But with time and care, as it seems like you're motivated to do, I'm sure mm-hmm. you'll, you'll do wonderfully. Yeah. All right, everyone. That will conclude today's masquerade. Again, thank you, Sens, very much for coming on and for making time. I really appreciate it. I put a lot of time into these, and um, it means a lot for you to, to give this a shot. So I really appreciate mm-hmm. it. Yeah, but yeah everyone. Course, Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next stream. As for the masquerade, uh, I've teased the next guest on Twitter. It will be coming in two weeks, I believe, <sighs> on the 27th. Um, that's actually in like a week and a half, actually. Oh, boy. I need to get that set up and going. But yeah. Hope you had fun, sons. This was lovely of to course. have you on. Thank and you for having me. I'll be honest with you. I'm probably going to go straight to sleeping because, God, I got like four hours, five hours of sleep. Not running on a lot of gas, so I need to go recharge. Oh, yeah. Bye, everyone. Take care, and uh, I hope you all have a phenomenal day. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.